it's amazing how little I've changed, you know? When I was a kid, my mom used to say that my eyes were bigger than my stomach. Now my bank manager says my eyes are bigger than my wallet. <laughs> and he's sure right when it comes to cars. I'd love to have a kind of car like this, but can't afford it, of course. Because I like to drive, see? I do love to drive. I think most men do. Not that women don't, but it seems like men have a different sort of relationship with a car than a woman does. Women look upon a car as a friend. You know, I've, I've heard women say that. Oh, my car is thick. <laughs> what? My car is thick. It's in the garage. I'm going to go visit it. <laughs> Different with a man. I read someplace a long time ago, this psychiatrist said that the automobile was a subliminal sex object for men. Well, when I read that, I thought, ah, that's baloney. They're trying to read sex into everything, see? And then I got a new car. My first new car. I never had one before, see? Before that, I always had these old, funky, used, secondhand junkers. Which, you know, were great. They got me around, and, and I enjoyed them, and uh, they were cheap to operate. Only I had to buy uh, two tires at a time. See, the front tires never wore out. The back tires always did, because the car was always being towed. <laughs> so I finally got a new car, and I went out of town, and I thought, gee, I missed my car. And I thought, well, that's silly. It's just a hunk of metal. And then I remembered that little article about the, what the psychiatrist said, and I thought, well, maybe the guy's got a point. Because I found I had the same sort of emotion toward the car as I would a woman. In a sense, you know, I was very possessive of it. Most men are. You ask a man, can I drive your car? You kidding? <laughs> Mine. Nobody else sits there but me. I would get sort of jealous if somebody else did drive it. You know, like a garage attendant or a car park attendant. He'd drive it up and I'd get kind of jealous. Knew he was in there fondling the dashboard. <laughs> Guy's feeling up my car. <laughs> And then I realized that most men refer to them as, as females. Your man driving a petrol station? Fill her up. New car, huh? Yeah, she's a beaut, huh? Just got her. I'm gonna take her out on the motorway and I'm gonna open her up. <laughs> I'm gonna give her a real good workout. That's why it's so humiliating for a man to have his car break down in traffic, you know, because the bonnet's up and everybody's looking in there. <laughs> It's like having your wife laying out in front of the house naked. <laughs> it's personal. You can't look in there. <laughs> and it's just like a woman. Just like a woman, because if something goes wrong with it, there's always that one guy that's got advice. You know, if your car breaks down in traffic, there's always that one guy shouting at you from the pavement, Pop it! Pop the accelerator pedal! Pop it! Pop it! <laughs> So you follow his advice, because everybody's honking at you, you don't know what to do, you know, follow his advice, then it still won't start. Ah, you flooded it. <laughs> he leaves. <laughs> Same guys around when you got trouble with your wife or your girlfriend, you don't know what to do. You got to assert yourself, that's what you got to do. Show her who's boss. Go home, tell her if she doesn't like it, she can get the hell out. <laughs> that's the only thing women understand. Yeah, maybe I should, I don't know. <laughs> So you follow his advice, you see him a couple of days later. How'd it go? I told her to leave and she left. <laughs> well, sure, you pissed her off. <laughs> you can only push women so far, you know. So there are a lot of parallels to the car and, and to a relationship like that. I do appreciate cars, though. I, I mean, I appreciate what they've done. They've made travel in the 20th century so much more comfortable. Not necessarily faster <laughs> in some occasions, but comfortable. Because I don't know how people did it. About a hundred years ago or so, I don't know how people rode around in those stagecoaches. Metal wheels, primitive springs. Must have been pure hell. But you'd never know it, though, from the movies. I remember when I was a kid, I'd go see those westerns, and they'd show those people inside the stagecoaches, and they never moved. Oh, they moved occasionally back and forth, but nothing like the real thing. And there was always that one guy that was drunk. What I want to know is, how did he get that way? There was no way in the world you could drink in one of those things. <laughs> There was no way you could do anything in one of those. And a pin from a lady's hat could be a lethal weapon. Ow! The roads look so clean and immaculate. I mean, traveling on a dirt road in a conveyance with no windows and two drivers who didn't care where they threw their rubbish, they had to get a little disheveled. Now, whenever you saw a stagecoach doing this in the movies, it was either being pursued by Indians or outlaws. They always seemed to be running from somebody. But after 10 hours trapped in a stagecoach, they weren't running from. They were rushing <laughs> to. Of 
first out, it wasn't just stagecoaches that got this kind of cosmetic treatment. I mean, take any scene from any movie, old or new, set in a convertible. <laughs> Here they are, 70 miles an hour in an open car, and the only thing that's moving is the background. <laughs> Whenever I've ridden in a convertible with a girl, it's always ended up like this. And they never seem to look where they were going in those movies. Of course, I must admit, when I've got a beautiful woman in the car, I don't pay as much attention as I should. So getting a new car can probably be one of the most exciting events in a man's life. It's almost like, uh, almost like getting a new wife. Well, not quite. At least with the car, you get a guarantee that provides you with two years trouble-free running. But there's also the painful side of getting a new car. Because it means that you, uh, you gotta get rid of the old one. You know? So what do you give me for this? A trash bag. Shh. Very sensitive. Good, another of those. <laughs> it's like separating a mother from its young. Next, you'll be telling me it understands everything you say. It understands everything I say. <laughs> yes, well, um... I'll leave you two alone to say your last goodbyes. I'll be in the showroom. Oi! What? It's me. Who said that? I did. Your car. My car? Look, I know my big end's not what it was. My tappets are a little loose and it takes me a long time to turn over in the morning, but I still get you around, don't I? Sort of, uh... We've been through a lot together. Boy, if my seats could talk, I'd be making a fortune selling it to the news of the world. When you first got me, you couldn't stop raving about my terrific body. Well, yeah, but... Remember those Sunday mornings you used to buff me? I never let on about the way you used to polish me for hours. Look, I really appreciate that. And what about that night that husband came after you with an axe? If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Oh. <laughs> yes. And remember that blonde who sprained her ankle? On my rear view mirror. <laughs> and how about the time you were so bombed that you stuck your key in my cigarette lighter and tried to start me with a cigar? Oh. <laughs> hey, look, it's nothing personal. It's just that I. Look, don't just dump me here. Some kid will pick me up, kick me in the clutch, strip off my gears, and whip my throttle. I'm too old for all that rough stuff. Yeah, stop it! It was easier getting away from my wife. And while I think of it, I am not a she. Never mentioned it before because I thought you'd be embarrassed if you knew it was a fellow you were stroking and <laughs> fiddling with. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. It's just that we've outgrown each other, that's all. Well, how about just one more MOT for the road? No, I'm sorry. Look, let's just say goodbye, all right? Yeah, well, I feel used. Yeah. Uh, look, can I ask you one last favor? <sighs> Don't worry. On the test drive, I'll be perfect. They won't hear a squeak, a clunk, or a rattle. Thank you. Well, when I see you around, I'll honk, okay? <coughs> Bye. What a creep. I should have pitched him through the windscreen while I had the chance. <laughs> oh. Hello. Or should I say, hello? Oh, look at the bumpers on her. <laughs> hmm. No, no, no. A truck's definitely out of the question. Well, now, girl. Okay. So you're getting a new motor. Mm -hmm. Now, what sort of coverage did you have in mind? Well, you know, the usual uh, fire, theft and pregnancies. <laughs> Most companies regard pregnancy as an act of God. Listen, in the backseat of a Mini, it would have to be an act of God. <laughs> no human being could pull it off. Good part of the expression. <laughs> so, uh, you won't be getting a Mini, then? Oh, no, no, no. I think, in fact, the garage loaned me one of those little bitty cars once, and that was enough. I mean, you know, they're economical, that's true, and they're practical, but they happen to be one of the seven dwarfs. <laughs> Not if you get two passengers and one seven foot tall and the other seven foot round. <laughs> now, let's see, uh, how are we going to do this? Uh, John. I think it'd be best for you to get in the back. The seat's uh, nice and wide. <laughs> be a lot more comfortable. That's it. <laughs> That's okay. I'll get in the back. Put yourself in there. 
Okay. Got it? Let me get the hand here. No, 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 no. no. no we'll have to start again. Maybe if you go in sideways. The salesman told me that it seats four fully grown adults in limousine comfort. <laughs> okay, John, can you get in okay? Oh, no trouble. <sighs> you realize that inside him, there are three ordinary passengers trying to get out. <laughs> to attention. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll, uh, I'll move the seat back for you. Hold on there. Oh, my feet! <laughs> the seat's on my feet! Okay, wait a minute. For God's sake, move it before he sits down. <laughs> oh, there you go, John. Oh. Okay, everybody comfy? <laughs> See? I told you there was a lot of room in this thing. Oh, 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 oh! What's the matter? I've got cramp in my leg. I know it happens to me every time I make love. <laughs> oh, I know it. I get him every time I jog. Oh, I will get you shut up the... and let me straighten my leg? But if we don't go now, all the pubs will be shot. <laughs> oh. So no small cars for me, thank oh, you. Oh, very wise, very wise. Do you smoke? No, no, thanks. I quit a long time ago. Good. In that case, I've got just the motoring policy for you. Huh? The premiums are lower if you don't smoke. Really? They're even lower if you don't drink. They're hardly anything at all if you don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't smoke. Uh, I do drink. And, of course, you know I do drive. I'm surprised you could afford to do both. <laughs> no, you see, the fact is, Kel, that uh, you are considered a poor risk. Who says so? The insurance companies say so. Well, they're right about the poor, but why do they say I'm a risk? Because you're a comedian. What do they think I want to do? Crash the car for a laugh? <laughs> it is a known fact that you show people stay out late, you drink too much, you go to wild parties, you have a different sexual partner every night, you run the Wait a minute, out. wait a minute, how do I get in this branch of show business? <laughs> no, come off it, come off it. And another thing, people recognize you. Well, sometimes, but so what? Well, I mean, it's a known fact. A member of the public sees a celebrity behind the wheel of a car, they want to have an accident with them. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What do you mean, ridiculous? Not only can they sue them for a lot of money, they can ask them for their autograph at the same time. <laughs> oh, come on, that's, that's, that's silly. Nobody's ever driven into me. Oh, no. You ever been nudged in the car park? Yeah, but I've also been tickled in the movies. I mean, uh, <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, that's how it starts. You see, the bigger the star, the bigger the accident. I mean, people like Michael Caine, Paul Newman, well, head on collisions every time. <laughs> now, you see, the type of collision that you have is a measure of your image. Man, hope I never get rammed from behind. <laughs> and also, you are single. Now, that is bad. Why? It is a known fact that many men never look at their wives when they're driving. Or any other time, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, but you single blokes, you're always peeping and groping. Oh, you? now, wait a minute. I, I used to be married. Doesn't that count? No. No, the divorced ones are worse. Huh? It is a known fact that the vast percentage of hit-and-run drivers are divorced men. Oh, and hitting and running at their ex-wives, I suppose, right? No, they're ex-wives' lawyers. You know, this isn't motor insurance. This is highway robbery. Of course, but what can you do? Look on the bright side. You'll be driving around knowing that you're covered against any risk. Mm. Except, of course, you'll want to pay the repair bills yourself. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? So you won't lose your no-claims bonus. <laughs> but don't you cover me for any accident I might have? We do cover you. We just don't like paying you. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Let me get this straight now. I pay you so that if I have an accident, you pay me to get my car fixed. But if you pay me, I gotta pay you more so it pays me to pay to get it fixed myself. That's right. That's absurd. And then I've got the very policy for you. It is our insurance against losing your no claims bonus. <laughs> and if you don't claim on it, the premiums get less every year. It's our no claims, no claim, no claims bonus. I call this a rip-off. I call it insurance. Yeah, known fact. Please, can I just have the car for one more week? Just once. Today's a crankshaft. <laughs> Tomorrow, the wheels. Can I just see it? Wizarding hours are over. <laughs> Next, Rouse. Rouse. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, you again. What is it this time? Well, I got a couple of more glitches in my car. Glitches? What is glitches? Well, it's kind of like a bugaboo. I'm bugaboo? <laughs> what is a bugaboo? Can't you people speak English? Look, first off, I got a loose seat. Then you want a tailor, not a mechanic. <laughs> it's a driver's seat. It, it slides back and forth. Every time I accelerate, it slides backwards, and when I brake, it, it throws me into the dashboard. I don't understand you people. Just because you spend thousands of pounds on a car, you expect it to work. First, go. <laughs> what else? Well, there's a whining in the wheels, and there's this whistling sound around the windscreen. So whining wheels on whistling windscreen. <laughs> what else? Well, only one wiper works. One wiper works. <laughs> Which? What? Not what? <laughs> Which? Which wiper works? The passenger side, naturally. I had to drive 50 miles in the pouring rain, leaning over my passenger, looking out the window, on a seat to sliding back and forth. <laughs> With whining wheels on whistling windscreen. You got it. Now, when can I get this? Monday? Wednesday. Why can't I have it now? Now? Nobody gets a car now? Are you mad? Have you been on the moon? No, no. <laughs> and listen, I still got that squeak under the dashboard, and it's driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah. Leave it with us a few days. A few days? I've had this car three weeks. I've driven it exactly twice. If I had to spend as much time on my wife as I do on this car, I might still be married. And perhaps if you serviced her as regularly, you would also still be married. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you on Wednesday. And please, don't forget about that squeak, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's a squeak. Uh, don't call us. We call you. <laughs> now I'm stuck without a car. Uh. Hey, can I use your phone? As well, I've spent enough money here. <laughs> Sunglasses. Another thing car companies are getting into. So an ad in the paper the other day for Porsche sunglasses. Don't help you see any better, but you see a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> I suppose it stands to reason. If you're going to drive a sexy car, you might as well wear some sexy sunglasses. Because sunglasses are sexy, you know, especially in the hands of an expert. Used properly, they take on all the potency of an ancient fertility symbol. As in some mating dance, first the armor is removed to reveal the male intention. Then the traditional cleaning begins, which is the prelude to jumping on her bones. The armor is then replaced, denoting attack. And the search continues for another female. Kayla, I, I can't pick you up. Uh, my, my car's in the garage again. Can you take a cab over there and meet me? Okay, you know where it is? You do? Well, you've been to this place before? Oh, great, then you'll love it. Oh, no, no, it's a great little restaurant. It's uh, very, very romantic. Well, because it's uh, very, very dark. That's why. This is the place. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, it's a, it's a chair. God, it's dark in here. Well, it's supposed to be like that. See, it's, uh, it's very romantic. Good evening. Who said that? <laughs> Where are you? I just felt something wet and hairy. Madam, you're feeling my face. <laughs> Table for one, two, four. How many you got? Uh, two. Good for you. Follow me, please. Well, how? Grab the back of my jacket. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let go. This weight is at large with hot soup. I can't see a thing. Well, just grab onto the back of my jacket here. Oh! Wait till I turn around first. <laughs> oh! What was that? Hot soup. See anything you like? I can't see anything. Uh, look, we'll take a bottle to the house red while our eyes adjust. Right? right. Thank you. What kind of place is this? This is one of the most exclusive restaurants in the world. People come from all over to be seen here. It's very romantic. You think so? Yeah. Well, if it was lit up, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now. What's that? Well, tickling the back of your knee with my foot. I've got news for you. You're not tickling the back of my knee with your foot. I'm not? No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry, madam. You're fine. Oh. 
No. Would you like to order? Um, I just want something light. I just want some light. Do you have a braille menu? No. <laughs> and be a fresh out of guide dogs. I can't see this menu without some more light. I'm sorry, sir. Huh? There are quite a few married people dining here tonight. What difference does that make? They are not married to each other. <laughs> well, uh, give us a few minutes while we try and see the menu, okay? Yes. Thank you. Why do you think they keep this place so dark? Well, it's always more exciting wondering if the person you're going to leave with is the same person you came in with. <laughs> Stop that. Stop what? Tickling the back of my neck. I'm not tickling the back of your neck. Or well, something is. Huh? Get it before I scream. Well, here, don't. I'll get it. Here. Is that it? No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, madam. Oh, I found it. It's just a piece of string. Wait a minute. Here, let me pull it off. Hi, this is Kelly Monteith. I'm not in at the moment, but if you'll just leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Please speak after the tone. I refuse to speak to a machine. Goodbye. If he refused to speak to a machine, why did he say goodbye? <laughs> great thing about these things. Not only are they convenient, but you get a great insight into people. <sighs> Not him again. Hi, uh, this is me. I mean, it's me, Olivia. Mm -hmm. oh, I hate talking to these machines. Never know what to say. Oh, uh, is it running out? Yeah. Uh, do I still have time? Yeah. Uh, looking forward to dinner tonight, I'll be over at eight. Did I get it all in? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello, this is Klaus. We are fixed a seat on the binding wheel on the whistling windscreen. But we are waiting for the Viper. And we can't find the squeak in the, uh, how do you say, bugaboo glitch. No, no, no. <laughs> by tomorrow morning, I promise you, we will not rest until we have found the stinking little... <laughs> Speak! Speak! <laughs> Boy. This is my whole fantasy, you know? Here I thought I'd be tooling around in my brand new car all this weekend. The beautiful lady next to me looking for some out of the way hotel for a nice little romantic meal. Instead, what am I going to do? I'm stuck here for the weekend, going to grill a couple of steaks. Blew my whole little fantasy. Because cars, you know, when I drive, man, I can get great... My imagination just runs off with me. I get great fantasies. I can be dead broke. Put me behind the wheel of the car, and I can fantasize being... Like one of those jet-setting international playboys. You know, the ones with the magnetic personalities that six million pounds seem to bring. Always driving a great-looking car. Always weekending at the most exclusive country hotels. And, of course, always with a great-looking woman. And not just one. <laughs> Hello there. You love me, don't you? <laughs> Hope that's not an omen. <laughs> you know, it seems like no matter how carefully you prepare an evening, there always seems to be a, a glitch or sometimes even a bugaboo when you least suspect it. <laughs> like the cork that refuses to leave the bottle. <clears throat> Or the frozen spinach that isn't thawed as it might be. Uh. <laughs> then, of course, there's the cheese that I left too close to the oven. Which is fine if you like the runny cheese. Uh. Of course, it's not these kind of little glitches that decide the success or failure of an evening. Now, it's more what you say, right? Or what you don't say. I always feel that way. I always feel like when I'm with a woman, in intimate circumstances like this, that everything I say, my whole conversation is being evaluated, scored upon. I always feel like there's a meter someplace just ticking away, assessing everything that I say. <laughs> you know, one of the things I really like about you is you make me laugh. Really? Well, I'm glad, because I'm a comedian. 
I know. Yeah. I just love comedians. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad you said that, because when I first met you, I thought, you know, not only is she beautiful, but I'll bet she has a great sense of humor. Uh-huh. And how many times have you used that line before? Uh, 124. <laughs> no, no, actually, make that 125. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. I mean, why would I want to lie to you? Come on. We both know exactly why you'd want to lie to me. Really? Anyway, it's still nice to hear it. Yeah? Tell me something. What is a, uh, what is a stunning, fascinating, vivacious, yes. sexy... Keep going. ...girl like yourself? Woman. <laughs> what? I'm a woman, not a girl, a woman. Oh, but I thought you'd like being called a girl. We're so derogatory. Huh? I mean, I'm a responsible, mature woman. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> Who's acting like a little girl? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I meant that, 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 that's a, a joke. I, you know, a little joke? Remember me? I'm a comedian. Not one of your better efforts. <laughs> well, I don't mean to upset you, honest. I mean, anybody with half an eye can see that you're a responsible, mature woman in addition to being exceedingly attractive. Oh. You really think so? Listen, would I ruin two perfectly good pieces of sirloin steak if I didn't? It's okay, I like my steak charred. Really? <laughs> well, that's good. If you don't eat it, you can always sketch with it. <laughs> you know, you have a great quality. You do, you know, if, uh, you know, if you were in films, you'd make a natural sex symbol. Object. What? I'd be a sex object. Well, oh, well, you took me wrong again. I mean, when I said sex symbol, I didn't mean sex symbol. I meant sex symbol. You know, a symbol of your sex. You know, it would be, it'd be the, the ultimate combination of, of, of primitive emotion and, and, and pure intellect, which you possess. Well, I've always felt that I had a good brain. Oh, yes, with two... Magnificent hemispheres. <laughs> I do eat a lot of brain food. Yeah? Fish, broccoli. Oh. You know, you're very unique. Your mind, your body, even your name. You really think so? Oh, I do, I do. Oh, Olivia. I love that name. <laughs> Olivia. Olivia has such a musical quality to her body. You know, I'm just... <laughs> And nobody fits your name like you do. Not even Olivia Newton-John. Who? <laughs> well, uh, Olivia... I can't stand her. What? And to top it all, she's Australian. Oh, no, but... Uh, but uh, oh, no, what, what, what's, what's that, Olivia? Oh, too late, too late. No, no, it's People Olivia. People are always saying that to me. It drives me crazy. No, Olivia, Lawrence... Good Olivia. night. No, sir, Lawrence, Olivia, Newton-John, Wake up! Oh, Eva, the floor was right. Wake up! Huh? We have good news from the front. <laughs> from the service area. Oh, we have found the squeak. Come with me. Oh, great. I can't believe it. I've been here all day. Where's my car? Here. That's my car? <laughs> no, no, no. No, what is that doing? What happened? It took some doing, but we found that squeak. Also, we found this. <laughs> we found this.